the OAuth 2 implicit grant type with the Layer 7 OAuth Toolkit. In this video, we're illustrating the Layer 7 gateway, implementing the roles of the OAuth Authorization Server and OAuth Resource Server on behalf of your API. This relies on the OAuth 2 template implementation to which you attach your existing API, your existing source of API keys, and your existing identity providers. The OAuth 2 template implementation covers the entire OAuth 2 specification in all its richness. This video focuses on the implicit grant type. You will find other videos in the same series that cover other aspects of the specification. Follow the instructions in the Getting Started Guide to set up a template in your own environment. The OAuth 2 implementation template contains a policy for the authorization server. In there, you'll find a branch for handling each grant type. You'll also find a policy fragment which performs the runtime access control based on OAuth access token, which you can attach to your own policies. A sample resource server provides an example for this pattern. Finally, there's a client application for each grant type that you can use for testing purposes. The implicit grant type is like a simplified version of the authorization code grant type. The resource owner is redirected to the OAuth authorization server to express its consent. However, when the resource owner is redirected back to the client application, an access token is included in the redirection as opposed to an authorization code. The client application does not need to access the authorization server to get an access token. In fact, the client application is itself not authenticated in this grant type. Here I'm using the implicit test application. To initiate a new OAuth handshake, I click this initiate button. And now the client application redirected me to the OAuth authorization server. In my authorization server policy, here's the branch where I welcome the subscriber. You can modify the user experience here by changing the HTML or simply redirecting to another web page. In the second step, I'll authenticate the subscriber and prompt for authorization. Here you could plug in your own identity provider or AIM solution instead of using the built-in one. So I click login, I'm challenged for credentials, and then I'm taken to the next step. When I express my consent on the authorization server, the authorization server policy creates and persists the OAuth session information, including an OAuth access token. It then creates a redirection of response back to the client application, which includes this access token. So I'm redirected back now to the client application along with the access token. The client application remembers this access token and can now use it to call an API on my behalf. I can simulate this by clicking this button at the bottom of the client app, and here's the response coming back. The API call by the client application using the access token is authorized in this policy fragment. The sample resource server simply verifies that the token is valid and returns information associated with the OAuth se session for testing purposes. This session information would be used to tailor your access control rules when you attach this fragment to your own API. 